Welcome to part two of our series on my audio math survival spreadsheet. This is a free resource that you can get at the link below produced by mkc.com slash audio toolkit. Today we're going to be covering phase delay. It's not, uh, it's usually the most misunderstood and also least sexiest topic for most people, but uh, I'm pretty excited to share it with you. I know I learned a lot putting this together for you. If you're unfamiliar with this resource, it's got over 250 rows of calculations that are geared towards getting you better results out of your sound systems. I believe there's a whole lot of artistic decisions you can make uh, with your mix, but a lot with the system can be done just by understanding how physics and math work and, and putting that to work for you in the field so you can get better sounding systems. Anyway, in part one, we've covered frequency, period, and some of the decibel stuff. Today, we're covering phase delay, and there's definitely more to come. Let's jump right in. When I first started, phase felt really intimidating to me. I knew it was something I needed to dive in and understand, but really had a hard time wrapping my brain around it. I've had to come at it from a lot of different angles to really understand what's going on. And even in the process of making the slides for today's presentation, I learned something. So it's, it's always unfolding. It's something I'm understanding more and more every time I look at it. And I hope that understanding phase and how it relates to phase delay will help you in your audio journey as you put these pieces together to get better at sound system design and alignment. It. So here's my favorite one sentence description of phase, just so we can be on the same page here. Then we'll jump into phase delay. So phase describes where a certain frequency is in its cycle in degrees. And this is from Michael Lawrence out of his book. Make sure and grab it. It's between the lines, concepts, and sound system design and alignment. Um, I've read it a bunch <laughs> cover to cover and come back and reference it. It's really well done. Please make sure and check that out. You can go to his website, precisionaudioservices.com slash book and get a copy. It's been awesome. Fantastic resource. So anyway, that's his one sentence definition of phase. So if we know anything about audio, it is alternating variations in voltage or air pressure, right? So it's going back and forth. It's cyclical. So we know phase des describes cycles and how we measure that is in degrees. So phase, phase compares where it's at in its cycle to its starting point, zero degrees. That's our, 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 our ground zero, literally. And then there's 360 degrees in a full phase cycle. Let's have a visual reference for this now. So the relation of the actual waveform, which is getting drawn here on the right to where it's at in its cycle is really, really cool. This is a graphic made by Jack Shadler. He has a wonderful free resource that, that he's made that talks about digital sampling theorem and I stole this graphic for him. So this, this is a really awesome. So we start here now at zero degrees. We're moving through now we're to 90, coming around to 180 down to 270 and then we're going to come back to zero and you saw as time moves to the right we see the amplitude or the level of the wave move so we can see that it takes a while to complete one full cycle and then it basically makes a copy itself again so it just completes again around and around it goes so phase just describes if we were to take a snapshot here and be like hey wait stop we start at zero okay it hasn't really gone very far has to travel one full wavelength to go all the way around, then now stop at 90 degrees. And now we've just gone a quarter wavelength. So it's, hey, like at whatever frequency this is, let's just call it maybe 100 hertz, right? We said, hey, it's going to vibrate 100 times per second, but if we stopped it a quarter of the way through its cycle, that'd be the same thing as saying, hey, we stopped it 90 degrees of the way through of its cycle. And we can keep moving. 180 degrees is the same thing as it moving a half wavelength or going halfway through its cycle. And move on to 270, or the same thing as a three-quarter wave through its cycle or three quarters of its wavelength. So one full wavelength will be equivalent to doing a full lap or moving 360 degrees through the phase cycle. So that's a little bit on phase. Now, what in the world is phase delay? So delay, if you are delayed to an event or it starts late, that's a timing thing, right? So we're going to see how phase relates to time. So a great definition here is phase delay directly measures the device or system time delay of individual frequency components. That's, that's why in my earlier example, this is a single sine wave going. So that's how phase delay can be calculated. It's not for the entire signal. It's just one single sinusoid or one single signal, right? 
So put two other ways, like what questions does this help us answer is why this timing relationship of frequency X to our reference. So a reference can either be the starting point, so zero degrees, or we could actually be doing a transfer function in a software like Smart and be comparing it to the original signal. Uh, and basically we're saying, hey, whatever processing is happening in between our input and output, show us the difference in phase from whatever processing is happening. So our second question is if we alter the phase of processing X by Y degrees, what is the delta in timing? So we need those two variables, X and Y, which is one is frequency, and the other is the change in degrees. Some of you math smarty pants may be saying like, well, what, can't we measure that in radians? You can, but most of the frequencies available to us in the audio world, and we're gonna be talking in degrees much more. So what about phase shift? Let's talk about that, and then we can see how phase delay fits into the equation. So phase shift, it's sometimes used interchangeably, but phase delay, uh, I know I couldn't really tell the difference a while back, but now, but phase delay is concerned with the timing delta of a single frequency, remember, but phase shift is concerned with the total phase change over frequency within a single system. So this is talking about the entire broadband change. You're looking at the phase slope over what's happening. So if we're looking at this graph here, we now have no phase shift. So this is a transfer function. It's showing us what's happening between the input and outputs, comparing our measurement and our reference, right? So this measurement is saying, hey, there's, there's no change in phase. And how can we, how can we see that? So on our X axis here, we have frequencies. So this is the entire audible frequency spectrum here. We've got here from 20 hertz all the way up to 20 or close to uh, 20k or close to it. And here we have our degrees. So here it goes zero up to 180 and then zero now moving negative and then it would wrap around again. So right now we have no phase shift. And now if we inserted a high pass filter at 100 hertz, here's what is what would happen to the phase. The frequency response would be going here and then about 100 we'd start sloping down but that's not what we're looking at. We're not looking at the magnitude response, rather. We're not looking at that. We're looking at the phase response, the changing in timing over frequency. So this graph here is now showing me the total phase shift over frequencies. So there's really no change at all up here in the high frequencies. But since I put the high pass filter way down here at 100 hertz, this is where we're seeing most of the change. So we're seeing a positive phase shift, so it's up towards the lower frequencies are now being shifted in their phase cycle. So this is the high pass filter at 100 hertz. So now let's answer the question, what is the timing offset at 100 hertz due to that high pass filter's phase shift? That is, the, that is answering the phase delay question. So we're answering what is the phase delay at 100 hertz now with this processing in line? Another way to ask it is, was the time offset at 100 hertz? So if we triangulate that now, I have down at the bottom 100 hertz and the arrows going up to the graph. And then I can now look, well, that corresponds here on the side with 90 degrees. So I now have found that 100 hertz is 90 degrees offset from where it originally was. So we can now plug this into equation. So phase delay is the fancy little symbol over here is equal to negative in parentheses, the phase in degrees divided by 360 times a thousand over the frequency we are concerned with. So now let's let's step through each part of the equation here and start to plug in what we have. Just a reminder, we are, are 90 degrees offset at 100 hertz. So let's look at this first part, phase divided by 360. What's that looking, that another way, that part of the equation, what it's answering here is what percentage of the phase wheel have we moved through? So if we rename our, our, our graphic here, we started at 0% and now we're 25% of the way through and we're about to be at 50%. It's the same thing as being at zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180, 270, and back of the way around to 360. So that's what this is, is doing here, that part of the equation. So again, we wanna take these numbers and plug it in we have found that at 100, we are concerned with 100 hertz, and we now know that it is 90 degrees offset from where it was. Plug that in here, I now have 90 divided by 360, and let's solve that. So 90 divided by 360 is 0.25, okay? And that's the same thing 
as going a quarter cycle. Again, 25% of the way through, 25% is also the same as the fraction one fourth, right? You see how this is related to each other. Now that we have that there, let's continue to solve the equation. So we've plugged in 0.25. So now let's insert our frequency 100 hertz into our equation. So I've got negative 0.25 divided by 1,000 divided by 100. So that's where frequency goes. So now let's continue to solve that. That is 1,000 divided by 100. I apologize for my screaming daughter out there. So I got negative 0.25 times 10. Let's continue solving that. So 0.25 times 10 is 0.25 or 2.5. And now let's solve the negative part. Let's uh, uh, apply the sign here. And now we have negative 2.5 milliseconds of phase delay at 100 hertz. So 90 degrees of phase shift at 100 hertz is equal to 2.5 milliseconds of phase delay. So you would get the same result if you went to that row in my spreadsheet and plugged it in. So 90 degrees at 100 hertz is negative 2.5 milliseconds. We may be asking what, what in the world is negative delay? Does that mean that the signal is ahead? That's something we can jump into later in an electronics course or something like that. But just trust me, that, that is what the, the equation is right. That's the answer you should get. What I think is interesting here is you can get the same delay time and the same output, but with different frequency and phase shift. So what if I was 180 degrees offset at 200 hertz? I still get the same amount of phase delay. All I did was double the amount of phase shift and double the frequency, and it is proportional, which is pretty cool. So what? All right, how, how, what is, what's the takeaway from all this? Uh, this part of the spreadsheet is not one that I honestly use a whole often in the field of like, oh, I'm running into the specific situ situation. Let me calculate the phase delay. This was more something I have in here just so I can understand better what's going on. If I understand the relationship of one over T equals F and the, in, you know, the inverse, just being comfortable with all these building blocks helps me make better and more informed decisions. It helps me read all the graphs uh, from my measurement data better. So I, I wish I could say here's like the super, super practical takeaway. But all I can say is getting more comfortable with phase and its relationship to frequency and wavelength will only better your understanding of the practical things. So that's it. Here's our recap. Phase delay helps figure out the timing offset of a given frequency to a fixed reference. And what do you have to know? You gotta know the frequency you care about and its amount of phase shift at that frequency. You can plug it into this formula or use my spreadsheet and get great results. All right, thanks for hanging out today. That was part two of my Audio Mass Survival Spreadsheet series. You can get it at the link below. Hopefully this has helped you. Uh, I'm gonna be having more of these roll out. They'll, they'll roll through each of these. Exciting to share with you. My name is Michael Curtis. Hope to get you great results out of your sound systems and I will catch you next time.